We begin this story in Korea, where a massive crowd is gathered before a shrine in hopes of celebrating the new year. The announcer tells everyone to start the countdown from five seconds together. Among the normal citizens was a man who was wearing a hoodie over his face, covered in an intense blue aura as he stood in the crowd. His face was filled with worry as the countdown began. Looking at his hands, he curses at first but soon realizes that he has come back. His hands were trembling as he had returned to the time before he got swept away in the game. But as he gripped his hand tightly, he realized that he was actually at the final round of the game before, the 20th round. He wished that he could have stopped time, but then a flashback is seen of a window, showing that the rune of regression was on the last of its number of uses. 100 out of 100. Since this was his last regression and final chance, our main character decided that this time, he was going to finish the game. To do that, he needed to bring four other people with him to the last round. And so, he started to look around the crowd, wondering who would be good enough to be brought along to the final round. We turn back to seven minutes before, where we see a douchebag, his friends were excited over the fact that they were becoming actual adults soon, meaning they didn't need to have their fake ids. But the bald friend was thinking about his future after graduation, wondering if he should become a delivery man. He then turns to the douchebag, known as Yang Min, to ask him about what he was going to do. Yang Min reminded him that he was going to become a gangster. His friends were worried about him as they heard his answer, they thought he was joking, but Yang Min was confident about his choice, as his motto is, you only live once. His friends decided to laugh along with his joke, while thinking that he was stupid and that they needed to cut ties with him after they graduate. But then one of them was curious about what happened to his personal shuttle. Young Min smiles after being reminded and told his friends that he wouldn't let that gloomy bastard be free even after they graduate, making his friends laugh as they think of him as the devil. Young Min continues to tell them that he wanted to play with his shuttle for as long as he could, until one of his friends asks him if his shuttle was the one standing over there. Young Min turns to see and spots his shuttle, our main character, standing amongst the crowd. He immediately smiles and tells his friend that he was right as the countdown started. But then he sees the powerful blue aura that our main character was giving off. Making him wonder what it was, because looking at him right now, Young Min felt that he was different from usual. He also felt pissed off by our main character staring at him and wanted to go over to his side to beat him up but his friends stopped him, telling him to let it go since it was the first day of the new year. He agreed with what his friends said and decided to let him go today. And so, the group of bullies huddled together to celebrate the new year and for finally becoming adults. But then a voice echoed throughout the air, saying these words, Humans are interesting, to celebrate the new year when they don't know what situation they are in. Young Min was alarmed to hear that, and started to ask his friends if they were the ones saying it but they denied it. Until a beautiful and majestic angel like being descended from the skies, telling everyone that seeing you all for it when you don't know anything. To us, you seem like monkeys in a cage. The people in the crowd couldn't believe what they were seeing, some thought of it as a New Year's event while others wondered if it was an actual angel. Our main character was looking up as well, still hating on the angel even though he had gone through this event 99 times already. The angel started to laugh to herself, calling all the humans before her as trash, she noted that they seemed to be love-struck by her appearance, but warned them that it would be best to not think about such useless things. Since she had no intention of being around trash, but seeing how everyone was stunned by her appearance and words, she could see that they could hear her voice well. A single man from the crowd started to yell at the angel, shouting and asking her if she was cosplaying or whatever the hell it was. He continues to curse at the angel while our main character thought that it was a shame. The angel was still smiling but became silent after hearing the man's words thrown at her. But then her eyes started to glow bright red, saying how annoying. In a single moment, the man's head exploded, blasting blood to everyone near him. The young man beside him started to panic as he saw the blood covering his hands and clothes. As he let out a scream, everyone started to run for their lives. Young Min was still confused by what was going on as he stood in place. The angel was super pissed this time, over the fact that a trashy human was speaking informally to her mighty self. She tells the remaining trash that they didn't have any right to ask her any questions and to not act arrogantly unless they wanted their heads to explode like the man from before. She continues to talk down on everyone asking them if they knew what was going on, but she cancelled her own question, after all, humans were just trash to her. So she tells them that she was going to explain every single thing, our main character closes his eyes, wondering if he needed to listen to the explanation for the 100th time. The angel tells everyone that they will be playing a game from now on, for 20 rounds, on the first of every month, their souls will be transported to a new dimension to participate in a game. 
That was one of the things that we human beings needed to do. To complete the given quests. If they manage to complete those quests, they will receive rewards and return back to the real world. Young Min still had that blurry look on his face as members of the crowd started to discuss what the angel was telling them. She could hear them talking about completing the quest meant that the angel will spare them but she corrects them, revealing to everyone that even if they complete the quest, not everyone will survive. Since the angel was going to spare half of the participants in order of completion. The members of the crowd couldn't believe what they were hearing as the angel continues to tell them not to worry so much as she won't be taking all of them. The crowd began to go crazy and started to yell at one another after hearing what she said. The angel then reveals that only humans around the world aged between 15 and 29 will participate. Our main character didn't know that he would do this game a hundred times as soon as he turned 20. An old man in the crowd was happy to hear that, and shouted out that he was saved while Yang Min's friends realized that they were screwed. His friend grabs onto the old man, pissed off over the fact that he was happy. But Yang Min stops him, reminding his friend that he would die like the guy whose head exploded because of the mess he was making. The angel started to scan the planet and concluded that there will be over 1.8 billion participants in the game. And so, with the wave of her hand and a smile on her face, she announces the start of the game after having explained it to everyone. Our main character was now standing alone in a completely bright and white space. The angel's voice continues to be heard as she explains to everyone that they have all entered their own individual spaces, which only they can see. She explains to them that they needed to shape their body in preparation for the soul transfer as the main character sees his reflection in a mirror. It was a type of customization, since they only had one chance, the angel warned them to choose wisely. After doing this for 99 times, our main character knew exactly what to do, after choosing his customization, he requested for his nickname to be, Black Scythe. We are now teleported to a vast plain area, filled with a green field. Our main character had finally arrived inside the game, making it his official 100th time. Since he had the same appearance since the 12th time, our main character felt that his avatar was just like his own body now. The other people of Earth started to teleport into the game as well, going over to their friends while being amazed by their new looks. Our main character looked at them, and could see that as usual, everyone had made themselves look cool and pretty, something which was not smart to do. He knew that in the other world, the strong prey on the weak. If your appearance is too noticeable, it's easier to become a target. Since if you die in the other world, you die in the real world as well. Looking elsewhere, our main character thought that it was time that a certain someone came. And there he is, the mightiest douchebag bully, Wang Yang Min, making his appearance and looking all jacked up. Our main character could only turn away and smile awkwardly, because he expected Yang Min to buff himself after all. The angel finally made her appearance as well, looking at everyone's faces, she could see that they liked their new avatars, and even their fearful expressions towards her was great. She started to count and could see that there were 1,800,000 people, so all the humans from Seoul were now here. But the people couldn't believe that there were actually 1.8 million people here as they looked around. The angel heard their words, and immediately became angry, shouting at them that it was none of their business since there were other spaces where other angels were proceeding with the round. And so, to begin with the official start, the angel began with a simple explanation. She tells everyone to say out the words, status window in their heads, summoning a golden window in front of themselves. Ryu Min was looking at his own status window but thought that it was making him sigh, after all, this is his 100th time doing the same tutorial. The angel continued to watch over everyone as they opened their status window, telling them that if they played a game before, then they would know how shitty they were right now. And so, she tells them to become stronger, and to survive till the end and clear all 20 rounds. The angel reveals to them with a smile on her face, that if they clear the game and survive, then they would be granted a single wish. The angel even tells them that she had prepared a gift for all of them. Young Min immediately opens his inventory to check what it is, he places his hand inside the inventory window, and could see that it was a random rune. The angel explains that the random rune was something that they can only use once when they are level 1, and it is the only item given to them in the beginning. She tells them to hold it and say the word use in their head, only then would they be able to use the item. Young Min followed her instructions immediately, the moment he said use in his mind, the random rune shattered in his hand. His face changed expression as he saw what came out from it. The angel was giggling to herself after seeing their expressions, some of them weren't pleased, so she tells them that no matter what they get, they must accept the outcome, since this was their luck. Since they were finished with the runes, the angel wanted to get on with the real thing. 
With a snap of her fingers, a new golden window appears in front of everyone. It was a quest window, telling them to kill 100 goblins each. The appearance of the quest window also summons the goblins that they were going to kill. Everyone soon spots the goblin from a far distance, thinking that it truly felt as if they were in a game. But then, the angel warns them not to get excited so early as not all of the goblins have been summoned. Just like that scene from Avengers Infinity War, more golden pillars of light started to appear, summoning even more goblins onto the vast plains. The players started to panic upon seeing the huge number of goblins that were coming in. 10,000 humans versus 50,000 goblins, announced the angel as she tells them to fight to the death. The goblin starts off the battle by letting out a fierce roar and starts to charge towards the players who were panicking amongst themselves. Ryu Min was the only one with balls made of steel as he walked past everyone. He continued to walk with his hands in his pocket towards the goblin who was charging at full speed, the other players tried to warn him that it was dangerous. But with a single menacing glare in his eyes, Ryu Min simply kicks the goblin straight in its ugly face. When you are a part of a group, the first impression is the most important. Ryu must imprint the image of his power on their minds. To avoid being swarmed by pesky flies, Ryu needed to show how strong he is right here and now. And most importantly, he needed to be the object of the angel's attention, who seems impressed by his actions right now. With a twirl of the goblin's dagger in his hand, Ryu needed to put on a performance for everyone present. In a single dash, he cuts down the two goblins that were charging towards him easily. The other players were soon impressed by his actions, wondering who Ryu is and believing that his nickname Black Scythe was pretty awesome. After seeing how easily Ryu killed some of the goblins, the other players started to realize that goblins were actually the weakest mobs in video games. So some of them started to gain some confidence, thinking that they can do the same as Ryu and that it would be easier once they were fighting the goblins. That is until one of the goblins instantly appears and slams into a player. The goblin was smiling after throwing down a player, with a knife in his chest. The other players saw this and the confidence that was building inside of them, disappeared instantly as they panicked and ran away from the goblins. Ryu was keeping an eye on them as he continued to cut down the goblins one by one. Inferno was the word written as he sees the players being brutally slaughtered by the weakest monsters in a video game. At this point, no one would mistake this for a game anymore. Right now, there is only one train of thought inside everyone's mind, survival. The instinct to survive will dominate their head and they'll be busy running with no sense of direction. Ryu had made the same mistake the first time. Only after dying twice did he realize that there was no escape from this dimension. As seen from a female player who was running away until she bumps into a yellow shield. The other player nearby notices what was going on with her as she tries to push past the barrier. A player was holding down a weak looking goblin while aiming a dagger right in its face, he was hesitating to kill the goblin as it stared back at him with a pitiful look on its face. The player's weakness gave the goblin a chance to fight back as it escaped from his hold, and this time, the player was the prey. The angel was giggling as it watched the players being killed by the goblins, begging for help, but all she saw was an amusing fight between humans and goblins. She knew that even though the goblins were the size of a kid, the humans wouldn't stand a chance against a whole swarm of them, especially if they were armed with daggers. But something else on the battlefield was catching her attention. It was Ryu, looking at the way he was performing, she wondered what's up with this little human. She could see from his window that his name was Black Scythe, and that he was close to completing the goblin's slain quest. But she was angry with the system and called it shitty for blocking all the player info except for their quest progress. Although it hurts her pride as a noble being for guiding mere mortals, the angel was excited to see that a few of the trashy humans were actually quite interesting. Another goblin has been slain, prompting the notification to appear and allowing the player to gain 4% experience and 10 gold. The system also informs the player that he had leveled up and that there were only 25 goblins left till the quest was complete. Ryu easily dodges a flying dagger as 5 more goblins charge towards him. He easily runs past each of them, stabbing all of them in the chest as a blue streak of light follows behind him. With a casual spin of the dagger in his hand, Ryu aims for the last goblin, who was clearly afraid of him right now. And so, Ryu shows no mercy and stabs the goblin in its face. Causing its blood to splatter on his face as he looks up. The other remaining goblins now know who the big daddy is as they tremble in fear of Ryu. Looking at their current state, Ryu wipes the blood off his face, believing that he could take a breath right now. He opens his status window to see that he was currently level 4 and had 6 stat points to use. After all, in this game, you can get 2 stat points when you level up, 
So Ryu decides to play all of his points into his agility stat without hesitation. The reason behind it is because agility raises not only the dodge rate but also attack and movement speed. Ryu also knew that there was nothing more important than agility in the beginning of the game. As he stares at his dagger, Ryu believes that his speed of progress should be enough to draw the angel's attention, making wonder how he should put an end to this. He starts the end by taking out one of the goblins by throwing the dagger into its face, he looks at them to ask if they were going to come at him. The goblins were clearly angered by his insult but hesitated to move against Ryu, he sees this and lets out a sigh, deciding that if they weren't coming to him, then he was going to go to them instead. In a swift motion, he brushes past all the goblins and appears at the one which had his dagger in its skull. The goblin immediately turns around to face Ryu, but it is too late, he cuts every single goblin around him down in an instant. Allowing him to level up and complete the quest, the system informs him that he has completed the first round quest, causing a bright yellow pillar of light to appear around him as the bodies of the goblins disappear. As he stayed in the light, Ryu thought of the first round as an easy pass, since he went after the goblins like crazy to catch the angel's attention. The system informs him that he has achieved rank 1 in completing the quest in the given zone. And he had also achieved rank 1 in completing the quest across all the zones. Ryu smiles at the window, since he did everything before in order to achieve rank 1. The sooner you complete a quest of the round, the more favorable the rewards will be because they are granted as per your rank till third place. The reward for achieving rank 1 in his given zone is the lowest rank rare weapon selection coupon. Rewards are given separately for the given zone and all zone categories. And for achieving rank 1 across all zones, the reward is the special reward selection box. Ryu immediately selects the lowest rank coupon, which opens a window presenting him with three rare weapon choices. But before he selected one of them, Ryu thought that it was a shame but he was just thankful to have this in the beginning. And so, he selected the stiletto as his weapon of choice for the reward which allows him to throw away the goblin's dagger. He also decided to use the all zone special reward selection box for later. As everyone was still batting for their lives against the goblins, Ryu casually opened his status window. Looking at it this time, he notices a title that he had received earlier on, the title of last time regressor which is currently hidden. This was something that he had never seen in his past 99 tries. We now turn back to the time when the angel gave the random rune to everyone. He uses it and gains the rune of regression, allowing for the system to imprint it onto his body, but due to the remnants of this rune being detected in his soul, the imprinting failed due to the rune's traits. This was expected by Ryu, after all, if a new imprint works, then it would mean that he could regress infinitely, but then a new window appears to inform him that this was his 100th regression. Allowing him to gain the title last time regressor, which was something he didn't expect at all. In this game, titles are more superior than runes. The last time regressor title allowed him to stay in soul form for one minute upon death. Ryu can also be resurrected at any desired point in time with all his health restored. But since this is a single use ability, the title will disappear after resurrection. And accordingly, titles are harder to obtain than runes, since their effects were much better. Furthermore, resurrection only exists as the priest's skill, but even that can only restore up to 30% of your health. Meanwhile, this resurrection restores all health, meaning that Ryu has gotten his hands on something really amazing. Ryu's single punch to the bitch's face was enough to make her fall onto her knees, the angel couldn't believe that a trashy human being had just hit her. As she turns around to face Ryu, she sees that he had disappeared from her sights in an instant. But as she wonders how he disappeared so fast, our boy reappears behind her, with murder in his eyes. But instead of another punch, Ryu decided to grab the angel's wings, surprising her as she screamed at our boy, asking him what he was doing. But he ignores her words, as she begs him to stop. Ryu simply continues to pull out her wing, with a I don't give a shit look on his face. A ripping sound is heard as Ryu had finally pulled out the angel's wing from her back, unleashing a massive flow of golden blood everywhere. Looking down at her now, Ryu tells her to not be so dramatic. As he holds her down to the ground by stepping on her back, Ryu continues to pull out the other wing that Angel had while she screams in pain. Once he rips it out the final wing, he tells the Angel that she won't be able to run anymore. Looking close at the Angel who is trembling, he asks her if it hurts. She stutters her words as she replies that of course it hurts you dumbass. But Ryu knew that she would have been the one asking him that question while laughing with that stupid laugh of hers. The angel tries to deny his accusation but Ryu knew that she was going to kill him with a dagger hidden in her wing, and so he searched the wing, and found the hidden dagger. Which immediately silences the angel. As he threw her wings away, he knew it, but
but the angel kept on denying it. Telling Ryu that she never had such thoughts, but our boy knew the truth, since he could read Briel's face. Briel was stunned to learn that Ryu actually knew her name, but he tells her that it was none of her business as he summons his inventory to pull out his own dagger. As he held it in his hand, Briel started to panic over what he was planning to do with it. She threatens to blow his head up with a flick of her finger if he comes near her. But Ryu smiles, revealing to her that he knew that she didn't have that skill anymore. Her face was filled with anger as she warned Ryu that her fellow angels wouldn't forgive him for this. But he was still calm, as he knew that her fellow angels didn't care whether she died or not since angels were selfish creatures. Anyways, Ryu decided that it was time for her to die, so she started to spew all kinds of nonsense, telling Ryu that killing her wouldn't bring any benefits and that he won't be able to return home if he does. But Ryu knew that everything she was saying was a lie, since they automatically returned home. Leaving her confused on how he knew all that, she even begs him for a chance, as she was willing to tell him all the information he wanted, but Ryu declines. He reveals to Briel that he already got all the information he needed by torturing her. The way the angels live, the goals they had, and that he knew that they were also pawns in this guide and that their only duty is to be a guide. Hearing all this at once, Briel was legit confused. And so, Ryu finally plunges his dagger deep into her chest. Letting out a massive flow of golden blood once again. As Briel lay dead on the ground, the system informed him that he had defeated an angel. He was also the first player to kill an angel, allowing him to obtain the title of first ever angel slayer. He had also obtained the angel's blood and the rune of slaughter as rewards for being the first to kill an angel. The system notifies him that the obtained rune will be automatically sealed to the user's body. The rewards Ryu just got are given to the first player to kill an angel, his title doubles his stats when fighting against a divine type. Ryu learned about these rewards ever since his 13th time around, since these are rewards meant for only one person. The rune of slaughter increases all his stats by 1% whenever he kills an opponent but its effects only last until the round is over. Each of the rewards were comparable to a unique item. Ryu was smiling because he knew that the angels would be shocked once they found out that he already has a rune. And the potion he held in his hand was the biggest reason for killing an angel. It was the angel's blood, allowing for the player's class to change to the Grim Reaper. All players can have a class once they are level 10. There are 30 different jobs, and the way to change them is simple. First is to look for an item that will let you swap classes. Usually, it is naturally earned during hunts or through simple conditions. But there are exceptions. There are class change items that only one person can get in the right environment once they have fulfilled the conditions. Of course, the classes offered by this thing are on a different level. Bonus stats, class change, runes, skill options, and others. Everything is flawless, but even having such a powerful class, Ryu still returned back in time without even beating the final round. So he decided to try and get first place in all the zones. He was now staring at a window, telling him to choose one of the rewards. Looking at the list of rewards, Ryu's goal right now was to reach level 10 so that he could change classes. So he chooses the first option, the triple experience buff, which will be activated once he presses the second round. As he looked at Briel fading into the light, he knew that this was his last time and that he couldn't escape anywhere. So he needed to get stronger no matter what. The first round ended with over 900 million survivors in all areas with the second round starting on the 1st of February. Young Min and the other players that survived had finally been returned back to the real world. Looking around at the others, Young Min wonders if he had just passed out since their heads felt like they were going to explode, he thought that he was in a dream. Looking at his phone, he sees that the time was 5.20, the same amount of time he spent in his dream. Young Min's friends started to wake up as well, with their heads throbbing with pain and their bodies sore. One of them turns to ask Young Min if he had passed out, so he tells him that everyone around them did the same. They started to wonder if they were in a dream but as Young Min continued to look around, he could see the reactions of everyone else, making him realize that they weren't in a dream. As they finally realized that they had to go to the second round, Young Min noticed another one of his friends lying still on the ground. So he kicks him to wake him up, but he doesn't move an inch. One of his friends decided to turn him around instead, revealing a pale face. Placing his head above his mouth and nose, Young Min's friend's hand started to tremble. He tells the others that he wasn't breathing and that he couldn't feel a pulse either. They all soon realized that one of them was actually dead because he didn't survive the game. They started to look around once again realizing that those who weren't moving were all just dead bodies right now. Young Min's friends started to vomit and panic as they realized that the next round was going to be like this. 
But Yang Min was different, he was trembling with excitement as he found all of this to be freaking awesome. The reason he found this awesome was because it meant that everyone was the same now, regardless of whether they were born rich or not, they all had to survive the same way now. So he no longer has any need to grieve about how unfair life is. Looking at his friends all panicking, he tells them to calm down since all they needed to do was survive. He even tells them that they weren't the only ones in this situation, making it fair but his friends could only think of him as a lunatic. The bald guy complains to Yang Min that he still had lots of stuff he wanted to do, but Yang Min's attention was on something else. He tells his friend that he couldn't see his favorite shuttle anymore. Thinking about it before, he remembered Ryu being in the crowd before passing out, but then he smiles at the thought that Ryu must have died in the first round since there was no way a loser like him could have survived. But then another player wearing armor walks by, catching Yang Min's attention. Looking at the player with his armor on, Yang Min suddenly realizes something. Without hesitation, he calls out for his status window, which actually opens in the real world. He couldn't believe that it actually works. His friends didn't believe that it would work until they called out their own status windows. Soon enough, the other players around them started to call out for their own status window, realizing that they could use it in real life. Young Min went on to pick up a stone to test a theory. With the stone in his head, he easily smashes it to bits by simply gripping it tightly. His face was stunned as he saw the stone turned into dust, but a wicked smile grew across his face as he realized how awesome this is. The news soon reported that this morning, about 10,000 citizens lost consciousness at the bell tolling ceremony in Korea. There was video footage of what went on, the reporter told the audience that an unidentified woman that looked like an angel had appeared above the ceremony, and talked to the citizens below. Moments later, as the angel pointed her hand at a man in the crowd, his head exploded, killing the man instantly on the spot as everyone panicked and ran. Soon after, the angel stretches out her hand to the remaining citizens, causing around 10,000 of them to suddenly collapse onto the ground. Police reports reveal that only those aged from 15 to 29 years old had collapsed. And that this event was not only happening in Korea but across 128 other countries. The comments below in the video were a mix of trolls and fear as citizens couldn't believe that this was real. Ryu was watching the news on his phone, realizing that everything was starting. But he knew that this was only the beginning, as the news reported that half of the collapsed citizens had been declared virtually dead after experiencing a heart attack on site. There was even a report of a celebrity dying as well. This is the first time in history that 11% of the nation's people have died. Other than the vast reports of death coming in, Ryu knew that the actual problem was something else, as he watches the news on a TV screen, the reporter reveals that the survivors were now called players and how many of them were still being counted. The fact is that the players' abilities have been carried into the real world. There weren't any people with high stats right now, so its effect isn't that significant, but as the players started to level up, they will soon become transcendental beings. This will result in the birth of literal human weapons, that no state-of-the-art weapon or even military can overpower. But Ryu wasn't going to stand by and let all of this happen, because if he does, then the earth will be destroyed before round 20. He knew of one solution, which is to control the players with overwhelming force. He had to use a different method from his previous life as he needed four other players to open the boss room on the 20th round. Ryu already had a few candidates in mind, and had come up with ways to get them on board as allies, but as he walked home, he knew that right now wasn't the time to act yet. Because he has something more important to do. As Ryu enters his house, he notices something on the kitchen top, he could see an empty cup of noodles. And so, he opens the door of a room, revealing another person sleeping on the floor. He smiles while looking at his brother who was in such a deep sleep that he didn't even notice that someone had come in. This little kid is Wani, Ryu's younger brother who is in his third year in middle school. Their little family had changed a lot after their parents passed away in a car accident. The biggest change was that Ryu became Wani's one and only guardian in this world. Looking at his cute younger brother, Ryu notices a bandage on his hand, covering a heavily bruised injury. He didn't say anything and simply turned on the lights, waking up Wani who was in a daze. He tells Wani that it was already morning. Wani looked at his phone and told his brother that it was only six. Big brother simply snatches his blanket away from the little man, telling him to change clothes since they had to go somewhere. As Ryu handed him some new clothes to change into, Wani was still in a daze so Ryu told him to listen closely. He warns him that right now the whole world is a mess, so they don't have time to sleep peacefully anymore. As the two brothers walk down the empty streets of Korea, Wani turns to look at Big Bro, wondering why he has such a serious look on his face. 
Ryu then asks him if he knew what was going on with the world right now. Wani obviously didn't as he questions Ryu about what happened while he was asleep, Ryu simply tells him to look at the online trending searches. Taking out his phone, Wani reads it and wonders what it was all about, how an angel took people into the other world. Ryu corrects him, saying that it was their souls that were taken. Wani then realizes that Ryu must have been one of them. Ryu tells him that he went and made it back alive after killing 100 goblins. Wani was concerned about his health and immediately went to check if Ryu had any injuries. But he simply tells him not to worry, which angers the little bro. Causing a flashback to start. It was during their parents' funeral, while Wani was crying like a baby, Ryu stood tall and firm without shedding a single tear. Looking at his big bro's back, Wani knew that Ryu had more inner strength than anyone, enough to fill the void left by their mother and father. But he knew deep down that inner strength and killing 100 goblins were two different things. Plus to Wani, Ryu wasn't that strong physically. Big bro suddenly smiles and tells Wani that he knew what he was thinking about, he reveals that the other world has a stats system like games, so his real world physical condition didn't matter. Ryu continues to assure Wani that once he sees him later, he wouldn't think about him in the same way anymore. But Wani doesn't believe Ryu at all, forcing him to tell him where they were going as he wouldn't take another step. Wani was serious about knowing where they were going first. Ryu's eyes were drawn to the bandage that was covering the wound that Wani had, so he simply tells him a name, Bang Tae Gyu. Ryu reveals to him that they were going to his hideout, the guy who bullies him. Wani was shocked to discover that Ryu knew that he was being bullied, he didn't want it to be obvious, because he knew his big bro was already having a hard time. Looking at Wani's reaction, Ryu felt sorry because honestly, he didn't know about it before. He first found out the truth a few hours after he returned from round one in his previous tries. That time, he decided to go to sleep while Wani went out to school. He was soon awakened from his slumber by the constant ringing of his phone. The moment he picks it up, a voice asks him if he was the guardian of Wani. The voice then tells him that needed to come to the hospital immediately. Ryu rushes out instantly after hearing the news. Wani had come back blind after being beaten up by Bang Tae Gyu. Ryu, who was a weak and pathetic older brother back then, couldn't even protect his younger brother. But this time was going to be different, as Ryu was determined to not let anyone bother him again. We now turn to an abandoned warehouse, where somebody is getting beaten up. A blonde man was shouting at some injured dudes, telling them to bring $200 each. But since they failed to reply back to him, he saw this as an insult. The big blonde man started to kick the shit out of them once again. As he continued to beat them, his group was watching him. They were happy to see how ruthless he was to the losers. But they were soon feeling afraid of Tae Gyu, after all he did make the other school seniors gravel to him, so these guys knew that they shouldn't play around with him. He soon returns to them, cracking his neck. He was pissed off since he was planning to buy a motorcycle with today's money. So then, he asks his group if there was some other way to get money. His question made them think hard before one of them came up with an idea. He reminded Tae Gyu that he has his errand boy, hearing that idea brought a smile to the blonde's douchebag's face. He remembered that he was going to call Wani today, since he wanted to beat him up for a bit for the new year. But then Tae Gyu tells them that Wani was a complete bum, because after being beaten by him before, he remembered that Wani didn't even bring a single penny, plus the place where he lives was pretty shitty. Bringing disappointment to the gang as they looked upset. But as Tae Gyu remembers that Wani had an older brother, light started to pour into the warehouse, making the others wonder what was wrong after seeing his reaction. Ryu had arrived along with Wani behind him, the gang were glad to see them as they were scared for no reason. Tae Gyu made his way past the gang to greet Wani, but instead he shouts at him, calling Wani a bastard. Wani apologizes to him straight away while trembling in fear, as he holds onto Ryu's jacket. Tae Gyu however, was more concerned over who Wani brought as he finds the mysterious person's expression extremely annoying. So he shouts at Wani, telling him to explain who the person he brought along with. Wani started to stutter in his speech as he tried his best to explain to Tae Gyu. Ryu introduces himself as Wani's older brother to the gang of bullies. After knowing who he was, Tae Gyu was preparing to kill both of them today. He looks at one of his gang members who immediately understood what he wanted. So the minions made the first move, walking confidently towards Ryu and Wani in order to beat them up. The first dead man started to flex his height against Ryu, so our boy answered with a straight jab into his ugly face. As the first dead gang member fell, the other one was startled by what happened. He tries to land a blow onto Ryu but completely misses his attack. Who in return sends another jab, smashing the bully's face. This time, 
Ryu's attack was powerful enough to send the bully flying into the shelves. The remaining bullies couldn't just stand by and watch, so they went in for the kill against Ryu. But all they got in return were punches directly into their faces. The only one left standing in the bully gang was Taegu, who stood behind while everything was happening. For some reason, he was laughing to himself, thinking that Ryu was just some nerd, who must have learned boxing somewhere, he finds it funny that Ryu would come to him with only that much skill. He confidently walks towards Ryu, thinking that he was acting out just because he learned boxing somewhere. As he towers over Ryu, he tells him that he doesn't understand the importance of weight class in boxing. Ryu was glad that Taegu hasn't heard the news, which left him all annoyed and confused. So he decides to throw a punch at Ryu, who casually dodges it by moving to the side. Taegu was relentless with his attacks as he constantly tried to land a hit onto Ryu who was moving like a squirrel, pissing off Taegu even more. After failing to land any hits, Taegu's vision of Ryu started to blur, making him wonder what was going on. This time it was Ryu's turn as he walked towards Taegu, with his fist covered in a blue aura. He tells him that if he watched the news, then he wouldn't come at a player like him. With that, Ryu ends the match with a single uppercut to his face. But it didn't end the match as the big bully was able to come back from Ryu's attack. But as Taegu punches in front of himself, he realizes that Ryu has disappeared from his sights. But as he figured out where our boy was, it was too late. Ryu lands another massive punch to Taegu's face at once. Feeling the pain behind that hit as he walked back, Taegu warns Ryu that he could knock him out with a single punch. But the sight of his own teeth falling out and blood dripping from his mouth made him pause. Before turning into full on rage mode, as he swears to kill Ryu this time. But his punches can never land as Ryu easily sidesteps them, before grabbing onto his wrist and holding Taegu in place. Allowing Ryu to punch him multiple times on the other side of his face. The other bullies could only hide behind some boxes as they watched in fear and shock over what Ryu was doing to their leader. Feeling the pain behind the punches, Taegu slowly realizes that Ryu was purposely aiming to hit him in the face. Looking at our boy smiling at him, the bully was determined to at least land one single punch. So he rushes towards Ryu, begging any gods for the chance to at least land a single punch on our man. His prayer was answered in the form of a leg attack this time. Ryu decided to kick, sending the bully flying far towards the wall this time. Kneeling on the ground, Taegu was trying to catch his breath as Ryu called out to him. With cold dead eyes, Ryu stares at the bully who was in pain, asking him if what he feels hurts. Because after regressing 99 times, an image of his younger brother, bandages wrapped around his eyes that were bleeding and wounds all over his body, was a sight that, as the older brother, couldn't forget especially the emotions that he felt that day. As he walked over to the bully, who was feeling afraid of Ryu who was determined to stop his younger brother from experiencing that horrendous hell again. Taegu started to beg him not to come any closer, but as he begs Ryu to stop, it was useless. As our boy holds onto his hand, surprising the bully. With a cold smile on his face, Ryu tells the bully that he shouldn't have messed with his younger brother. Snap. Taegu heard a loud snap sound as he looked at his own hand before screaming in pain as Ryu had broken his wrist in a single motion. But the punishment doesn't stop there for the bully as Ryu continues to grab onto his other healthy hand. Seeing this, Taegu started to panic as fear took over, he started to scream and beg Ryu to stop what he was going to do. But it was all useless as Ryu continued to break his wrist, causing the bully to scream even louder in pain. Taegu's crew started to run away after seeing and hearing what Ryu was doing to their leader. Wani was still in the warehouse, choosing to close his eyes as he turned away from the sight of what his older brother was doing. The screams of Taegu were causing him to shiver. After snapping a few more bones, Ryu warns the bully about what would happen to him if they were to touch his younger brother again. Hearing that, Taegu started to cry, telling Ryu that he understands what he meant by that. Hearing that brought a smile to Ryu's face but he still grabbed onto Taegu's shattered hand, telling him that he had to make sure this time. The scene ends with Taegu screaming out loud in pain, the loudest he had ever screamed in his life. As they left the warehouse behind, Wani was curious about whether Ryu had learned martial arts or something. Hearing that, Ryu figured that Wani hadn't heard about the news yet, so he informed him that the players were able to use their abilities in the real world as well. Ryu demonstrates by summoning a golden light in the palm of his hand which turns into an actual dagger. Wani was impressed to see that a dagger had come out from the golden light. Ryu tells him that the players were able to summon weapons from the otherworld like this. Knowing that, Wani figured out that Ryu's quick movements were a part of the player's powers too, which made him dodge Taegu's punches. 
Ryu reveals to him that he had 11 points in his agility stat, just like those stats in video games. Free agility state was an average adult, whereas 10 points was like an athlete. As they continued their way, Wani was curious about what would happen if Ryu levels up even more, but he tells him that he didn't know as he had never gotten to that level before. But this was a lie as Ryu didn't plan on telling Wani that he was a regressor. In the past, during his 11th regression, Ryu had actually told Wani about everything. After that, another player had kidnapped him. Even though Ryu had taken revenge, he decided that he didn't want his younger brother to endure such a harsh truth because of him. Looking back at his younger brother, Ryu knew that in future fights between players, he needed to be ready to protect his younger brother. But the first thing he needed to do was to get some breakfast at the convenience store, since Ryu knew that Wani was probably hungry. As they entered the store, Wani was curious about where Ryu was heading since the instant noodles were in a different direction. It turns out that Ryu was going for the ATM to have a look at his precious savings. Looking at the screen, he only had $133 to his name. But he still happily withdraws a $100 as Ryu planned to do something with it which surprises Wani. Ryu then decides to head over to a different section in the store, telling Wani that they should pick from this side instead. But Wani was hesitant in choosing the items from this side as they were pretty expensive compared to what they usually get from the store. But Ryu assures him that it was fine for today since it was New Year's Eve. Hearing that, Wani immediately and happily picks the grilled red chili paste pork belly as his meal of choice for New Year's Eve. Ryu could only smile, looking at Wani who was drooling all over the pork belly meal he had chosen. Seeing how happy his younger brother was, Ryu then suggests that they head over to an all you can eat restaurant for some Korean beef. Wani declines Ryu's suggestion, telling him that they couldn't afford Korean beef and that he was more than satisfied with the pork belly meal he had chosen. Ryu continues to smile, thinking in his head that all they needed to do was to wait for a few days, after that. Ryu was sure that he was going to let Wani eat all the meat he ever wanted. Wani was happy to eat the pork belly meal, but as he ate, Ryu stood out and left. Coming back to the table with a bunch of lottery tickets, surprising Wani. Looking at the amount of tickets on the table, Wani was shocked to see how many there were. Ryu tells him that he had gotten 20 tickets which was worth all the $100 they had. Wani was shocked to learn that Ryu had spent all their money on tickets that they might not win. But our boy fills out the tickets continuously, confidently telling Wani that everything he wrote were the winning numbers. Thanks for watching the latest part from the voice of Manwa. Subscribe for more content and don't forget to comment below what you want to see in the future. Like and share for more.